Hi, this is Randall Schwartz, host of Floss Weekly. This week, Dan Lynch joins me. We're going to be talking about Seagull, a Seattle conference for GNU Linux people. You're not going to want to miss this, so stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Floss Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Floss Weekly with Randall Schwartz and Dan Lynch. Episode 483, recorded May 10th, 2018. Seagull. This episode of Floss Weekly is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully, so you can be confident that you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash floss. And by IT Pro TV, flexible and entertaining training for your IT career. Visit itpro.tv slash floss and use the code FLOSS30 to get a free seven-day trial and 30% off a monthly membership for the lifetime of your active subscription. It's time for Floss Weekly, the show about free, libre, open-source software. I am your host, Randall Schwartz, Merlin at Stonehenge.com, bringing you each week... The movers, the shakers, the big projects, the little projects, projects you may be using every day and not aware of it, projects you might want to download and play with right after this show. Today's show is not going to be either of those. It'll be something entirely different. But nevertheless, we will have a show. Uh, well, joining, joining me once again, let's see if I can use words this time. Joining me once again <laughs> is my lovely and talented co-host, Dan Lynch. Dan, welcome back to the show. Hey, it's good to be back. Yeah, it's been a little while, but you know, you can't keep me away too long. I found you. I know, I know. And uh, <laughs> and where are you speaking to us from? Probably somewhere near Liverpool. I am, yeah. I'm uh, yeah, I'm I'm just on the outskirts of uh, of Liverpool in the UK, which is kind of in the northwest of the of the uh, of England if if people know it. And uh, yeah, and that that's where I am at the moment. I've had to in fact the weather here is usually awful compared to you guys in California and so on, but it's mm-hmm. so bright today. I've had to shut the the blind down because it was going to wash out the screen. So I'm just I'm just amazed by that. That's never happened before. I've never had to shut this before. So um yeah, I'm hoping that uh, yeah, that it's going to keep going and we're going to get good weather. And I think you qualified that statement a little overqualified, but you said it's in the northwest of England. If you if you know that, it's also there if you don't know it. So I <laughs> it is. Yeah. It, no, no, it, it's, it's like when yeah, when, when people can't see it, when people don't look at us, we don't exist. Um, all right, sort of right. Really, okay, that'll work. Yeah, yeah. that'll work. And I am speaking yeah. to you from a hotel in downtown San Francisco. I am here this week, as I've been saying for many, many weeks. I'm here for Red Hat Summit, uh, looking for more guests for the show. Um, uh, so far, I've only come across one or maybe two. So I'm hoping that uh, today, when I finally walk the um, expo hall one more time, I'm going to find a few more that I can bring on because we do always have slots to fill. We do always have slots to fill. Well, as I said in the opening of the show, this is a slightly different show because this show is about a conference. It's about an organization uh, that is putting together this thing called Seagull, S-E-A-G-L, uh, which is a, a Seattle GNU Linux Expo. It's a two-day expo. It's absolutely free. It's on November 9th and 10th uh, coming up. I am planning on being there. Uh, and the reason, mm. Dan, I brought you on today is because uh, you have a little bit of experience with conferences, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've organized a few conferences in my time. Um, I don't know if, if they're quite as big as as this one so um we'll see but yeah i used to o- organize a, an annual event called og camp which is still going and i believe simon our, our good friend and co-host simon phipps is involved in organizing that this year he's he's on the team so uh, we've passed it on between i think aaron's up next um it must be like yeah. pass it to aaron next um but yeah we've done that before and uh, and i love the name because uh, one of the great things about being here by the sea in, in Liverpool is we are swamped by seagulls. I say great, it's not always great when you're trying to eat and stuff and they're, they're swooping down on you. But we got a lot of seagulls here, so you know I, I know a thing or two about seagulls as well. If we get into that, well, we have a we have a couple of people who are helping organize the show come on coming on today, and we'll bring them on in just a minute. But I do want to mention that one of them is Adam Monson, who uh, when he contacted me about doing this uh, also reminded me that he was on a show back in November twenty first, two thousand eight. Uh, show number 47, I think back then I was still doing it with Leo. I think it was that long ago. It might not have been. It might be a little bit later after that. Uh, but it was a long, long time ago. So that's almost 10 years. This, I do believe this holds the award for the longest number of, of years between two visits from the same guest. Because we've had a few repeat guests on before. But I think this is the this has got to be the, the big one. 
Uh, and he's going to be joined by Salt Hale as well, who's also going to be talking to us about seagulls. So anything more before we uh, get started? No, I'm, I'm just keen to find out more about the event, to be honest. Okay, well, I do have an important message before we continue because... This episode of Floss Weekly is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. The mortgage experience wasn't keeping up with the times. It was dated, and it needed a client-focused technological revolution. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. Rocket Mortgage gives you the confidence you need when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. It's simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. It's convenient. Their trusted partners allow you to share your financial information with Rocket Mortgage at the touch of a button. It's powerful. Whether you're looking to buy your first home or your 10th, Rocket Mortgage is able to perform thousands of calculations in seconds. Based on your income, assets, and credit, Rocket Mortgage can analyze all the home loan options for which you qualify and find the one that's just right for you. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Apply simply, understand fully, mortgage confidently. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash floss. That's rocketmortgage.com slash F-L-O-S-S. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states. NMLS Consumer Access org number 3030. And we thank Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans for their support of Floss Weekly. Now let's go ahead and bring on our first guest, uh, Adam Monson. Adam, welcome back to the show. It's rare I get to say that. Thank you, Randall. Uh, yeah, it's great to be back. And as you know, I'm a huge fan ever since, of yours ever since the Llama book. So it's great to see you again. Awesome, awesome. I always appreciate it when people get to say that. And where are you speaking to us from? I'm in Seattle, Washington. Cloudy, not rainy at the moment. I'll wave in that general direction. It's over there somewhere. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> and I'm not there, although I was there briefly at the airport on my way down to this trip. So I usually take Portland to Seattle and wherever I go because I get extra medallion qualifying miles but that's a detail that's not relevant here <laughs> let's go ahead and also bring on salt hail salt welcome to the show hi nice to be here great and where are you speaking to us from i'm also in seattle washington i'm at the university of washington well you know it's it's it, stupid me this is a conference that's happening in seattle i should have just figured both of you guys <laughs> would be in seattle because otherwise well, it makes it Really we have a lot of organizers, stuff. and they're not all in Seattle, though. That's kind of significant. It's a, it's, it's a. I don't know if it's unique among conferences, but some people travel a long way just to organize. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, yeah, I know that uh, you know the, the the pro conference is organized by people that are mostly remote as well. The ones I'm going to in a few few weeks here. So, uh, tell us about Siegel. How did it get started, and and what's your audience, and uh, and and what do you, what are you aiming for here? Yeah, totally. Well, Siegel, as you mentioned, short for the Seattle. GNU slash Linux conference. Uh, it was founded in, uh, well, I got the exact date and time Zulu, uh, April 30th, 11.50 p.m. Zulu, actually, when uh, two of the other co-founders, Rob and Deb, were, were in a car ride. And really, it just started with them wanting a conference uh, like Linux Fest Northwest in Bellingham. There just wasn't a conference like that in the Seattle area. And so we kicked it off back then, and uh, it's been going. This will be our sixth year this year in November. Wow, six year, and so um, uh, what's what's the typical run? Is it like a typical multi-track conference? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, there'll be uh, tracks uh, for uh, beginners, intermediate, advanced. Um, real focus on the introductory and beginner level, I would say. Uh, it's not just about programming. It might seem that way. It is a tech focused, but uh, we realize uh, very deeply that tech is about all parts of tech, all contributions. Uh, and so it, it's kind of whatever whatever part you're familiar with and are interested in uh, is comes to the conference. Welcome. So one of the things yeah. we hear from other conference coordinators, conference organizers, is the number of talks they have to reject. Are you at the point where you're popular enough that you get way more talks than you can ever put in your schedule? Boy, I'm going to defer to Salt. Do you remember how many? I, I would say like, I want to say 60% we're able to take. Um, we do get quite a few submissions, definitely more than we can take. Uh, yeah. But I forget yeah. the exact number. Yeah, we. I believe uh, this last year we got somewhere between 120 and 140 submissions and uh, we're able to accept about 55 of them. Um, and so I, I should, oh, go ahead. Uh, I, I should also mention something that's a little different is that we are a Friday Saturday conference, and part of that is that we're held at a local uh, college, 
And so we try to get student involvement on Friday um, with more of the employers who aren't paying their employees to come on Saturday. Oh, that sounds great. And so how did you how did you work out the arrangement with the, the, the college to be able to hold the event there? Yeah, Seattle Central was super generous um, when we first started. Um, we didn't know how to start a conference. We all wanted one, uh, but it took a real leap of faith from specifically Lisa Sandoval at Seattle Central. It's called Seattle Central Community College back then, now it's Seattle Central College. Uh, and they said, okay, you get sponsors lined up, you get a date, and you can host here for free. So I don't know how common this kind of arrangement is, and we, we do pay them now. Uh, but that was pretty critical in getting started because it's it's a real chicken and egg problem between sponsors and, and site and date. Chickens and eggs, I guess. <laughs> yeah, multiple <laughs> branches on that as well. So the um, – so, so – Okay, so I'm, I'm definitely attending. I'm definitely you know, mark those days off on my calendar. So I'll be coming up. And I've got relatives near there anyway, so I'm probably just going to hang out with them uh, the day before the day after. Um, so what what should I expect to see when I uh, show up on Friday morning? Right on. Well, I, I first I want to tell you what you expect not to see. You're at you're at um what, you're at Red Hat Summit right yeah. now, right? <laughs> it's n- yes. nothing like that. So it's it's going to be, uh, <laughs> imagine going into one large conference room at, at Red Hat Summit, and then the entire conference is kind of, the expo hall would fit in, our expo hall would fit in there. And then we have some, we use some of the classrooms at the college. Uh, they're, I mean, they're great for lecturing. That's what they do in them all the time. Um, sure. But it's very small, intimate, um, relaxed, low key. There's no uh, registration that you have to do. You you can if you want, uh, but but some people want to remain anonymous. That's totally fine. There's no charge. Uh, you can wear a badge or not. Um, we're at that size where we don't need to worry as much. Uh, we just um, lean very heavily on our code of conduct and and um, take it very seriously and make sure everyone else does as well. So there won't be giant booths uh, with walk-in seating and uh, giant video screens. Uh, although the, the the sponsors get very direct, intimate connections in our in our expo hall, it's small enough that the sponsors make a pretty giant impact. So that's that's kind of a fun part we can offer that's unique to other conferences for our sponsors. So I'm going to be with other people. How many other people are typically at these? Uh, yeah, the headcount in the expo hall it 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 gets. Uh, like comfortably busy, um, I would say 100, 150 or so fit in the expo hall. And then throughout the conference, there'll be about 500 over the two days. 500, that's actually pretty impressive for a, for a small conference mm-hmm. like this. Um, have you attended other conferences like SCALE and obviously Northwest Linux Expo um, uh, to get ideas for new things to do for the conference? Absolutely, yeah. Salt and I have uh, been to a number of conferences, and we I watch your All Things Open uh, uh, Floss Weekly, and uh, mm-hmm. we've been to OSCON. Uh, I haven't been to Scale. Uh, Salt may have been to that, um, but we keep in touch with those. The other conference, it's kind of a small network, and so we keep in touch. The Scale folks were our fiscal sponsor. Now our fiscal sponsor is the FSF, and I can I can get into that if you want, but basically it means we don't have to establish a 501c3, uh, which is nice at this point, uh, but yeah, that's basically it. So, yeah, so, um, go ahead, so I would say that one of the conferences that I was really uh, impressed by um, when I finally went was Libre Planet, which is the FSF's conference. And so it's it's been kind of um, cool to see some of the, the parallels there. Yeah, and uh, Libre Planet, that's been going a, a while now as well, hasn't it? I'm, I'm sad to say I've never actually... Never actually made it over to, to Boston. It's, it's a bit it's a bit further for me, obviously. I suppose it's a long way for you guys on the other coast as well, but I've got that bit of water in the way that makes it a bit tricky. Um, but it seems like a really good event. So people who don't know, Libra Planet is the uh, Free Software Foundation's uh, conference that they that they run. So you got ideas from that? Did you did you get inspiration from from the stuff that you saw there? Um. So one of the original organizers of Libre Planet. Um, Deb Nicholson is one of the Siegel organizers, um, so there, there's there been a lot of cross-pollination for sure. Excellent. And um, I know, one, well, since we're talking about the FSF, this fits in really well. One of the things that I noticed, which I was really impressed by on your um, on your front page of the, of the conference site, is it clearly states you do not need to use non-free software to register for this conference. So clearly that was a really important uh, an important thing that you wanted to, to to make sure was possible. So, can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I'm I'm happy to jump in on that. That was yeah. um, part. It, it we did it 
a couple of years ago when Richard Stallman came and keynoted, and it was actually a requirement of his. And um, we mm -hmm. agreed. We said, you know, it's a goal of ours to try and uh, obviously we're here to promote uh, free and open source software. And so absolutely, it wasn't it wasn't easy, but it was a lot of fun to be able to accomplish that and say we do that. I think folks appreciate it. So, so what do you actually use for that? Because one of the things that I found in organizing events and stuff is that a lot of it, it tends to end up being around things like Eventbrite was something that we used a lot. Other other conference tools are available, I should say. Uh, but we used Eventbrite a lot, which I'm sure Richard would consider very much non-free software, uh, even though it's essentially a website. So what do you use to, to do that? Do you have your own software? Do you have something? Did you create something or did you manage to get something off the shelf? Uh, it's off-the-shelf free software called OSUM, Open Source Event Manager. Mm. I believe the OpenSUSE folks put that out. Um, we've been in contact with their their developers, and we have it's it's forked a little bit at this point. Uh, but we're not. I don't think we're far from mainline. But those guys have been awesome. Uh, mm. Stella Rizzi comes to mind, and a couple other folks uh, there. And I believe uh, Linux Fest Northwest is also now using OSUM. Um, they've moved from Drupal. Yeah, um, okay. I should also mention that um, one of the, the considerations when we switched to that um, was that uh, Fosdom is in the process of switching to them as well. So it's gained some traction from larger conferences. Yeah, I mean, Fosdem is, is huge. I have been to Fosdem a couple of times. That is huge. It's, um, if anyone who doesn't know who's listening, um, it's uh, an annual event in um, in Belgium. And um, it's huge. You're talking like 7,000, 8,000 people. Uh, easy. So if it can handle that, then you guys should be should be golden, I presume. That's, that's, that's what you thought, anyway. Yeah, for sure. It's not that hard. Uh, it's not that hard. It just, you know, if you if you believe in it, you're doing something you're doing something great. I think people just show up. So the software mm -hmm. is, is, is not a small thing though. It, it would help to have budget or a specific sponsor. I think for anybody else who's trying to start a conference, um, I've got all kinds of advice. Just contact me, you know, any way mm -hmm. you can, I'm on the, on the internet, but I, I didn't know we could do it. And, and then we did, you know, and it just took patience, people and passion. Three P's. Yeah. There you go. That's really that's pretty good, yeah. PPP. Um, I uh, I noticed as well. I mean, we talked we talked about free as in speech, but also the, the conference is free as in beer as well. So you can attend, uh, you know, without having to fork out a load of money. Because one of the things um, that puts a lot of people off uh, some of the larger, more corporate conferences is the ex some of the costs can be really exorbitant. So was is it important for you guys that that people can get access that you know money doesn't need to be a barrier? Absolutely. Yeah, that's it's kind of a core value we share. Um, we don't have a lot of organizational structure and bylaws, um, but we've discussed that internally and that we we enjoy that we can offer that. Uh, and and people do show up. Uh, and, and the only commitment you have to make is to the code of conduct, uh, which we, we mm -hmm. publish and put all over the walls and stuff and just make very sure that people feel comfortable. We want to establish a an environment of creativity and psychological safety and just fun. And, and I think the code of conduct is kind of the root of that. Mm. It's probably something that a lot of people in the free software community would be familiar with as well, the idea of the code of conduct. I mean, lots of projects have these now. Um, so they, they, hopefully they're used to it. Um, when I was organizing events years ago, we had discussions about things like code of conduct. And uh, it's an interesting one. I mean, and I, I, I found that people, I mean, the people that we attracted, thankfully, were always pretty respectful and so on. And, and then later on, we brought in this kind of official code of conduct, which was good. But in the same way, I kind of felt like, you know, it was it was strange to need to enforce on something that was already where people were already being, you know, I suppose, cool to each other. What I used to say to them was be excellent to each other from, you know, Bill and Ted. Um, it was always like, you know, be excellent to each other um, is the advice. And not that I take all my advice from Bill and Ted, just most of it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, I would add that it's, has it's anything happened? To be... did, you, did you find it was you oh. needed the code of conduct? No, I, I mean, I, I think we deal with stuff as it comes up and we communicate very readily. Um, but I think I would say that you, you we may, th you know, you may feel like everything's going well for you and the, the people that are there, but there are other people that won't come unless they feel safe and you don't, mm -hmm. you don't know who they are necessarily uh, until you reach out. And uh, it's, it's funny, a, a kind of funny thing to, to, to kind of focus on, but, um, but I think it is very important and it makes people feel, feel welcome and, and relaxed and safe. And, and then you get to the learning and the greeting and the, and kind of the ideas start bursting and that's where it really, 
matters, but you have to have a, a bit of structure there first. And we just we strive for that minimal structure, you know, just to save money, uh, so we don't have to we don't have to get big and and pay for lots of things, but also mm. so it's approachable. And, and speaking about structure, actually, a little bit of structure that that leads me on to something else I was thinking about. So, the events that um, the, the, a lot of the events that I organised were in a kind of bar, bar camp. I think you said bar camp. That's bad, isn't it? Bar camp. They might have been a bar camp, but a bar camp format. Hopefully, they weren't a bar camp. And um, that meant that people could just pitch talks on the day, and we didn't have we'd have a, a few kind of keynote speakers, if you like, that were that were kind of set in stone, and then everything else would be thrown in. But you guys have a, have the the more, kind of more traditional model if you like the more established model of of people submitting papers and stuff do you find it have you have you thought about you know maybe adding a bar camp element or or is it does it help to to have stuff kind of you know to know who's coming and what they're going to talk about so uh so, so yeah, go ahead Saul. yep um we've definitely discussed this somewhat and we do have um like day of lightning talks basically every year uh, okay yep and mm-hmm. that's been since the beginning. Um, we've, we're actually experimenting with a couple of different things and have been over the last um, last couple of years for sure. One of which is that we have two length of talks. So people mm-hmm. can uh, give 50-minute panels or 20-minute panels. And that's something mm-hmm. we started last year that seems to have kind of – maybe you don't have uh, something that, that can expand for a full hour long. Um, we want it presented there. Uh, and this is gets to one of our kind of core um, presentation speaking, like things we promote, which is uh, new speakers and up and coming speakers. Um, you can see that with our keynotes as well. We try to attract keynotes where at least one is kind of a bigger name keynote, but one is maybe a speaker who's been doing this for some time, but not actually keynoted at event. And this year mm-hmm. we're um, expanding that even a little further and um, we're inviting four to four keynotes instead of two, so I'm um, giving them each half slots on the, the Friday morning and Saturday morning. That's excellent, yeah, and, and it is a really great thing that you can give people that exposure. One of the, I, I, I don't think the bar camp thing is is better or, or worse. Before I sound, in case I sound like I'm, I'm saying that because we we found real kind of limitations with it. But a lot of people were really tied to this idea that you know at a certain time, whatever it is. 9 a.m. first day, everybody kind of charges towards this wall and puts all their stuff on the wall. And they, they thought that was, you know, the way it should be and all the rest of it. But actually, as it went on, I realized that if you really want to include everyone, you're really only including the people who are maybe good at football or something who can push everyone out the way and get to the wall first. It's not that it's not really a good way to include people. So I totally get what you're saying. I, I like that, that idea of having more structure to it and being able to um, curate, if you like. Yeah, I should say on the uh, note of curation, something um, else that's new this year that we're trying is what we're calling a code of practice. And it's Mm. um, kind of a code that the programming committee is signing on to um, about how we're going to select things, not just uh, bring on our friends, not just bring on uh, people. um, And and along with this is um, providing help to People who are submitting talks before and during the process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want so, to hop on on the topic of mm. uh, speaking and the the like formal versus informal and that kind of thing. And I just want to say that it, there is there is like you say, Dan, a kind of a formal structure too. At least you submit a talk, you hear back, uh, the, the curate, but. The bar for entry is very approachable. Um, there's no minimum amount of academic nature, or uh, like we welcome all submissions. Absolutely, it's it's um, it's a great chance to practice speaking, to learn something new, and try it out. Even uh, if you're going to go mm-hmm. talk at a bigger conference, you're super nervous about that. Bring your talk to Siegel first. Uh, I think that's a it's a good way to do it, and it's it's a it's a lot of fun. I mean, you'll never you'll never find a more welcoming crowd uh, that wants to learn and is. And is open and and friendly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I'm, I'm just noticed in our IRC channel when people are chatting away, people are asking whether I mentioned football. Did I mean what you guys call soccer? I actually said football <laughs> in the American sense, given that you know everybody else here understands it that way. <laughs> not not the game you actually play with your feet. But never mind. I won't get into that. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, so that's a really important thing. And. Um, as you said, so do you get a lot of first-time speakers there? Obviously, it's something you guys really want to encourage, and 
you know, could you help them to, you know, mentor them a bit or something? I don't mean necessarily personally, but maybe even pair them up with somebody who's done it a lot before if they're happy to give them some tips and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. We do quite a bit of explicit activities to welcome first-time speakers. Um, from titling your talk, uh, there's brainstorming sessions on IRC. Uh, the chat room is is very active when these when these bursts come in. Uh, they'll they'll come in before the call for proposals, obviously, and we'll help people curate their own talk ideas. And really, honestly, it's just to help people build confidence. Like you can do this, you can talk, mm -hmm. you know, and we'll we'll be we'll be friendly to you and uh, and listen to what you have to say and. We'll uh, we'll help you. We'll help you curate your your talk idea and get your outline done. Um, trying to remember what don't we do other things too, Salt, to kind of help first time speakers? Yeah. Um. So we actually kind of like like uh, solidified this process. Um. We we have office hours that are regular uh, during the whole period of the CFP, where we mm -hmm. we will sit and help you craft your proposal. And um, again, we've tried to even expand that further this year, uh, implementing this code of practice. Um, and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> and it's also a good idea to uh, have people give their talk for like local user groups and stuff too, just to kind of dress rehearse that. I remember that uh, when I was practicing for bigger and bigger, uh, even keynote uh, talks at some point. So uh, I can't let Dan talk all the time because I have an important message to talk <laughs> about, which is this episode of Floss Weekly is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Do you know someone who wants to break into IT but doesn't know where to start? Are you looking to advance your IT career? Whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned IT professional, IT Pro TV is the only source you'll need. Learn the skills to pass in the most in demand IT search. From CompTIA and Cisco to EC Council and VMware, IT Pro TV has you covered with over 3,300 hours of binge-worthy on-demand training. New content is added daily, so your team will always be up to date. You can conveniently stream IT Pro TV's courses live and on-demand worldwide via Chromecast, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, PC, or by using their iOS or Android apps. Empower your team with interactive IT training that they'll actually enjoy watching. Gain full control over your team's training schedule and track your team's results via IT Pro TV's Pro Portal. See metrics like logins, viewing time, courses viewed, tracks completed, and more. Skip the boring voiceover slides snooze fest. Keep your team up to date and accelerate your career with effective and entertaining IT training from IT Pro TV. Simply choose a plan, create an account, and enjoy the journey. Visit itpro.tv slash flossed to learn more about IT Pro TV's team solution and to request a free team trial. Or sign up for an individual monthly membership with a free seven-day trial at itpro.tv slash flossed. Use the code FLOSS30 to receive 30% off your subscription for the lifetime of your active subscription. Premium subscriptions, which include unlimited Kaplan IT training practice exams and virtual labs, are normally $857 a year, but you pay only $600 when you go to itpro.tv slash FLOSS and use the code FLOSS30. Flexible training, binge-worthy content, ROI proven. Join the more than 90,000 IT Pro TV members today. And we thank... IT Pro TV for sponsoring Floss Weekly. So I have a couple of questions because I've been a speaker before, um, uh, and that, that whole thing you talked about just a moment ago about it being, you know, all uh, really cool in terms of, um, uh, you know, real support. I wish I had had that when I started because I, I, I did it the hard way. I did it really, really the hard way. Um, but but I, and I heard you mention keynotes. Who are your keynote speakers, and what are they going to be talking about? It's all. Do you want to? I got, I got them right here too. Uh, yeah, Molly I, DeBlanc. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, how about how, if you have them right in front of you? I'd have to. Pull them. Yeah, sure. So they're on Siegel.org, and so the 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 heavy details are on there. But I'll just quickly go over them. That um, we're we're super stoked for these speakers this year. Uh, Molly DeBlanc, um, campaigns manager for the FSF. Uh, Liz Joseph, uh, developer app, developer advocate for Mesosphere, and then Tamika Reed, uh, founded Women of Linux. And uh, Stephen Wally is a principal at uh, Azure. And so they were talking about, obviously, their area. But do you have specific themes for what they're going to be talking about? Um, I don't. I don't know that we they've committed to their final talk topics. Honestly, um, the the on Siegel.org you can read about um, their background and stuff. Uh, but 
uh, I think we'll do that along with the call for proposals that's coming up. So it's not too late. It's not too late to sponsor too. And I'm glad you mentioned IT Pro TV. Mm-hmm. That education goes right along with uh, with Siegel. Maybe they want to sponsor and, and Stonehenge too. I think we should get we should get Stonehenge <laughs> signed up for Siegel. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, if if I was in a position to be sponsoring these days, I probably would. It's uh, it's been a little slim for me for a while here. Uh, waiting to get into my next big thing because Pearl's sort of on the downside of the hill, and now I'm waiting for the next big thing. So the next big thing is Flutter, by the way. So I'm going to be doing that. Um, so. Uh, so, so wait, wait. So you still have a call for papers open? Yeah, it hasn't even opened yet. I believe, right? That's correct. Uh, it will run from June fourth to July twenty eighth, I believe. And um, oh. and on the yeah on the topic of uh, themes and such, uh, we we haven't really done an overall theme, but this year we're still kind of into discussions whether or not we'll have track themes. But uh, so far. It's it's definitely we've focused on just having a large variety of talks versus um, trying to create any tracks or boxes. Oh, so what I saw on the on the website already, I saw a full schedule. I thought you were, this was already planned and done, but I guess <laughs> that's last year's, right? No. <laughs> it's like chir- crickets chirping. Yes, it's last year's uh, 2017 is what. <laughs> Sorry I, guess I, can't. I think it, it does say 2017 at the top, Randall. I don't want uh, to upset you, know, you, but it does say GNU yeah, slash Linux conference 2017. I was looking at miss, it early this miss, morning. You can relive it. Okay. Right. Um, are any of these recorded? <laughs> so um, <laughs> this, is, this is something we've been working on over the last two years. And... Um, Unfortunately, last year uh, we kind of had to um, put that off to the side. Um, we had yeah, some technical difficulties. This, this is a huge opportunity for yeah. engagement. <laughs> we need a volunteer that is expert with AV and loves doing it because AV is expensive. It's hard to get right. Uh, as you guys, I'm sure, can appreciate, uh, we spent sure. you know, a good 10, 20 minutes getting our, getting our call working mm-hmm. at the beginning of this. It's hard. It takes experts. And so we need someone that's passionate about floss is in you know can get in the area and and loves to do loves to do IUV. We have people we have some people that are doing an awesome job so far. It's just uh, not not enough uh, bandwidth around that. And uh, and are, are you going? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say our keynotes are recorded and available on archive.org. Oh, that's mm-hmm. awesome! Cool. Um, and uh, are you going to have better than VGA projectors? <laughs> <laughs> Again, crickets. I need to address this to one of the two of you guys. That's, that's sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I can answer if you want, Randall. Right? Yes, they will. Yes, I'll just say yes, that on their behalf. You, no, Dick. sorry. <laughs> yeah, if you, submit a talk, if you submit a talk about Flutter, I will have uh, make sure that that your room has a HDMI and uh, a mini deep mini Display Port and uh, USB C connections. Yeah, that that's what that's what was so amazing about Scale. And I shouldn't dump on Scale, but it was pretty amazing that they only had a VGA projector. And it's, it's at, but they're using the the the, um, the um, Pasadena Conference Center, Pasadena uh, Convention Center's projector, and it was like, VGA, really? What year is it? <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> so it's like this incredibly bad ratio of, of things to show there. Well, so the call for papers is still open. I might uh, I might pitch talk then. That would be kind of cool. So I I may be there in more than one capacity, not just to kind of hang out, but actually um, uh, see things there. Um, so what's been the most difficult thing in producing conferences like this for, for you two. Hmm. Oh, crickets again. I got to stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> if only we were all in the I'm same room and we could look at each other. I know. Okay. <laughs> salt, salt. What, what's been the most difficult for you? Um, just, I'd say putting aside the time. Um, it, it takes a lot of time. We meet pretty much the entire year and, um, it can be a challenge, uh, not only setting aside the time for yourself, but having everyone set aside the time. Um, we we ask a lot, um, but we're producing something pretty cool. Yeah, and I'd, I'd say the same for me. You know, it's just it's a labor of love, and uh, the people that that love it and everybody, we 
we are absolutely reliant on every single volunteer, including all of ourselves. None of us are paid uh, to put on this conference, um, but it continues to grow and get attention and get amazing sponsors and speakers. So it's it's just been a lot of fun to see that people will show up because of what we do and why we do it, uh, not who, who we are or how big we are. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're also welcoming volunteers. So the call for volunteers is kind of always open, but know that it's a, it's a, it's, it's meaningful work and it's not just easy. Um, the, there are small commitments, but the bigger commitments, uh, are more fulfilling and, and I would say for individuals that do them are more fulfilling and meaningful as well. But hmm. so a, a bit of a follow up to that then, then Adam, um, I, I found in, in running events over the years that, as you say, you can never have too many pairs of hands to help. You really can't. So how many people are involved in, in running it? Do you have like a crew or, you know, do you, you probably I presumably need quite a few. Yeah, for sure. There's there's kind of a core group of us uh, decision makers, uh, just the organizers. And that's just it's just a flat hierarchy. We all. Uh, communicate pretty often and coordinate and are, are well aligned. Uh, surprisingly, without without much uh, traditional hierarchical or corporate infrastructure. And then there's just a horde of fifty amazing, fifty-ish amazing volunteers that uh, lots of day of support. That's a big thing. Um, but then you need somebody to organize the day of support and make the sign-up sheets and that kind of thing. Um, so it's it's what's the core group of us? Deb, Rob, Salt, me. Uh, Vicky, uh, John has been really involved. So there's like a core group of like six to eight, and then and then we kind of manage the 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 masses. And you mentioned that it can be time consuming, which is something I can really attest to. I mean, I think uh, Salt was saying that before. So uh, I'm going to address this one to you, Salt, soon as I've I've learnt from Randall. <laughs> um, <laughs> How do you do this then? Do you, do you do it with conference calls? You mentioned you're not all exactly in the same place all the time. How does how does the kind of organization process go? Do you have like a regular conference call? Do you how do you work all that sort of stuff? How email is it? Um, so we do email, um, but the majority of the organizational work uh, takes place on conference calls. We meet every other Monday, um, six uh, six thirty Pacific Standard. And uh, those calls are well like open for anyone who's interested in getting involved and helping out. But um, mm. they are every other week up until about three months before the conference, and then they become weekly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, and then uh, yeah. someone, sorry, I was just, I don't mean to interrupt you. Someone was saying, is it 6.30 a.m. or p.m.? I just thought I'd have to ask that. Uh, p.m. I'm assuming p.m. Yeah, I assume that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, carry on. <laughs> See, it might yeah, be 6.30 uh, a.m. for them because it's specific <laughs> time. Uh, yeah, but it's pretty mm-hmm. it's pretty low tech and uh, and that's approachable as well. It's just a matter of of making the time for that. And that's that's kind of the the trick with it is it's yeah it's a lot of work, but it's addictive. And the more the more I find myself, I don't know if this is true for you, Saul, but the more I volunteer, the more I want to because you see the impact it makes. You know, you see your things work, you see the sponsors mm-hmm. sign up, you see people show up and enjoy it and get stuff out of it. And so it it is does kind of feel like the more you do, the more you get out of it. Mm. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I'm conscious that I cut in on you there, Salt. I apologize. So uh, ca- carry on. Oh, no, yeah. I, I was just going to say that we also um, we've really tried to work with having different like subcommittees, and um, mm. they they arrange their own meetings um, to get cool. kind of make make that that biweekly meeting not as uh, as long. Yeah. It's almost a bit like the the kernel development kind of thing. So you have like maintainers of different things, different uh, you know subsystems almost. You mentioned subgroups. You've got like you know you maintainers of different groups and so on. Um, that's really cool. Um, I, I suppose one thing I was going to ask you is, um, having experienced this myself, did you when you first did this when you put the event on? Um, and you were there, and you you know you were waiting for say the day before. You're waiting to open. You're getting things ready. Um, it, did you get that feeling that, oh my God, what happens if nobody turns up? I've been in that position. Am I going to be stood in this room with like two other people? Uh, and how good is it when, you know, as you say, when you do actually see people um, turn up? So I'm going um, to, I'll, I'll kind of ask you both that, I suppose. But um, Adam, I'll start with uh, you. It's risky. You're going <laughs> yeah. to load into the, uh, the crickets. No, I, I, I've, I, that's actually kind of a cool story because I remember feeling really calm and just like, you know, if nobody shows up, Hey, I'm still here with, uh, I think it was five of us really that had become really tight. And it's like, oh, what if we're just talking to ourselves? Well, we'd still enjoy that. You know, we'd talk about 
do our little talks or something. But we knew beforehand that people were uh, signed up to give their talks. Um, but it was it was kind of neat to see a flood of students show up. It was Friday. Uh, and people would just kind of wander through what's this thing. And then so it happened. But I remember feeling really calm that I'd be OK with it just uh, if it was just us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and uh, Salt, I was going to ask you a similar sort of thing. Um, you know, did you get nerves the first year? Did you think, oh, God, what if this, you know, what if this doesn't like go the way we thought it might? No, uh, I, I almost have the opposite. Uh, I. Most conferences I go to, I'm running a table, I'm giving a talk, you know, I'm running mm-hmm. around organizing, putting up flyers. I, I really don't have any time to think that it might not go right. So that does make me think of one thing that I have to mention is when I, uh, having run a few conferences, I found that at the end of it, people would say, what was your favorite talk? I never really saw any of them because I was always doing something. <laughs> so yeah. do you get to see any of the talks? Because I, I ran like seven conferences and never saw one talk. I think I saw half of one and people were going, oh, this is a really good talk. And I thought, but I didn't mind because I wanted them to enjoy it and I wanted them to get something from it. It wasn't, you know, I didn't put it on for me to sit there and watch all the talks. But is that a problem? Do you get like, you know, you think, oh, I'd really like to just watch this talk, but I've really got to go and do stuff. Yeah, I have I haven't seen a talk at a conference in maybe a decade. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, it would imagine. be great if they were recorded. Um, and we, we are definitely working on that because there's somewhere I'm like, oh, I know this is a wonderful speaker. I, I gave them all fives trying to get them to the conference now. <laughs> mm. That's, that is such a challenge, though. I mean, you've mentioned this already. Adam was saying before that there's so much um, so much work involved around recording. Um, I've also had the experience of recording, you know, 20 hours of video of different talks or more, in fact, and then a year later still having them all, most of them still unedited and thinking, when am I going to find three <laughs> weeks to just sit and edit these? Because you want to do it, but it really it, it does involve so much work. So definitely, if anybody watching or listening to this wants to volunteer AV help, I know how useful that can be. So I, I, I'm sure you guys would appreciate that. Um, and I'm conscious that yes, wasn't a question. We Never mind. <laughs> that was a statement. <laughs> Just agree. Just agree. It's fine. Um, yes. <laughs> so, what about the social side of it then? That's a question I can ask. So, one of the great things about conferences for me is is often, and I think a lot of people find this. I mean, often the talks are great and and that's all good, but sometimes it's like the conversations you have in a corridor or in a in a you know in a uh, in a coffee shop or something afterwards with people. The social side of it. So, do you have organised parties, Adam? Yeah, we definitely do. Uh, thanks for asking me specifically. <laughs> That's kidding. okay. We're, I'm uh, getting the hang of this. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, we do. Uh, we have a. Uh, I believe this. We do have a Friday and a Saturday night this time, Siegel. Um, <laughs> yeah, for in November, Salt. Do you remember? Uh, so far, a Friday hasn't come together. Um, not yet. <laughs> yeah, but then during the day, I mean, I, I so I got kids and family, so I'm not I'm not usually out mm. uh, late much anyway. Uh, unless unless maybe Randall buys me a beer, I might I might head out. But we're uh, <laughs> so during the day is where I'm really I like I wake up early and I'm excited to get there early and let people in the front door and it's yeah there's there's a uh, lots of little uh, the, it's a college atmosphere so mm. it's it's super just you know, chill, relax. It's, it's, it's a city college, you know, so it's, it's, um, I don't know, really fun. There's, there's lots of, lots of little tables to gather coffee shops. And then during lunch, I mean, you just have kind of all the really affordable, yummy, different kinds of restaurants all nearby. Um, there's actually, which you couldn't believe from Seattle, but there's actually cheap parking right nearby. I'm probably going to jinx us this year, but <laughs> there's, there's cheap parking nearby. There's definitely public transit for them all over the place. Um, but it's, it's kind of a great atmosphere to be right there with just, uh, uh, as far as encouraging conversation and social situations. And then we do have that plan party, Saturday and something usually comes up on Friday as well, but the Saturday is a big mm-hmm. one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and sorry, go um, on, go on. Yeah, uh, I will just uh, to add on to that. We also provide coffee at the morning and an afternoon break mm-hmm. on both days, and um, the Greater Seattle Linux Users Group G Slug uh, often kind of hosts this big uh, like pizza lunch on Saturday during the day. Um, but, Traditionally, the FSF has hosted a Friday night kind of party that's nearby, as well as, of course, yes, mm. the conference party on Saturday night. Mm. And, yeah, and it's a sponsorship um, option for 
Sorry to interrupt. Dan. Yeah, it's no, a sponsorship go on, go on. option. Yeah, I, won't, I won't shrimp on, on, your, on your sponsorship option. Go for it. <laughs> well, just stop me if I'm pitching too much. I just That's my job sometimes. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, but for sure, somebody can pick that up explicitly. Um, sometimes there's a specific sponsor, like Salt was saying, the FSF does their own their own kind of uh, free software gathering. Uh, but if a certain sponsor wants to pick up the party and just uh, nail it, they do that too. Uh, it's same with coffee or childcare. If somebody wants to pick up that specific thing, uh, they can kind of pull that off the a la carte sponsorship menu. Mm-hmm. And what about the kind of crowd that you get? You mentioned that you 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 have your family there and stuff. Do you get a is you get a diverse crowd? Is it um, you know is it surprising sometimes to see all the different people who come? And I didn't direct that again, did I? But Adam, you go <laughs> you go first. <laughs> I'm not going to help you. I guess I'm not going to help you out. You're not yeah, for sure. Here, no. uh, Come on, guys. Help me out here. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. There's uh, people from all walks of life. And uh, and, and the, the biggest diversity is from, you know, experienced tech people. I mean, Randall show up. He's a, he's a you know, Pearl veteran and a genius in programming for sure. Uh, and there'll be just people who have never talked to. They're just like, oh, I just heard of Linux. They'll show up or something like that. We'll bring them, bring them into the room. And so... It, it does actually, it, it seems to bring people who, at any level um, without fear. They're just kind of excited to see what's this about and, and what can, you know, what could I learn or what could I do here? Uh, and they're usually leaving smiling. Mm-hmm. That's always a good, always a good point. Always a good place. Well, we're almost out of time. I do have a couple more questions though. And one I wanted to ask about MyFos, uh, what happened to that? Is that still around? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's still around. Ed Cable is uh, running uh, uh, Mifos.org, has all the def- details there. Um, they're, they're growing. Um, they've split into uh, – they're under the Apache Foundation now. Uh, Ooh. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're doing a lot with microfinance. That's still going on 10 years later, I guess. Wow, that's a, that's actually almost a record for some of these longer uh, projects, which is really nice. Uh, I also, also want to know – because uh, uh, Dan addressed this a little bit. So your first – conference your first time you did it how did you promote it how did you get people there in the first place oh man i don't even remember maybe some mailing list i want to guess we hopped on the the linux fest mailing list and said hey come to this one too we put up flyers all over uh <laughs> i'm blanking out i don't even remember the wow. attendance that year. it was it was a whirlwind for sure i was uh running around uh, doing everything with the rest of the 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 three or four of us that were organizing back then. So the first year was really just like the, can we do this? And we did. And then it, it kind of uh, went up a big cliff the second year of uh, improvement and, and uh, growth. And uh, if you had a group of five people, say from some other random city, like say, uh, I don't know, not Boston because it's already happening there, but like, uh, I can't think of city names now. Boy, they let anybody do this Chattanooga. show. I, I am not. Chattanooga. Yes, yeah, so let's say Chattanooga. Uh, if five people approached you from Chattanooga and said, we want to put on a show, would you try to talk them into it or talk them out of it? <laughs> uh, well, first of all, I'd love to talk with them regardless. Uh, it, and I, I think I'd do a bit of both. You know, See, if, if they really wanted it, then people show up. Uh, if, if you really want it, you just you – just, it's, not, it's not technically hard. You know, It really isn't. You just have to want to, and then you have to line up some key things, sponsors, space – uh, but what, are, what were my three P's, Dan? Passion, people, and patience. I think is important. Uh, it mm-hmm. so you know I wanted to. I wanted one of my things. I wanted is to to have uh, a try and invite Richard Stallman to speak in Seattle. And uh, it took ten years, I think, of me emailing him and saying, well, "What about this?" And I was like, well, "What about if I made a conference that had the name GNU slash Linux in it?" He say, "Oh, sure, mm-hmm. I'd speak at that." And I'm like, "Okay." So now I'm on the conference committee and. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I got involved and 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 eventually he did come speak so that was that was fun but it, it does take it does take uh, those things I'm not gonna say hard work because you can get help you know there's lots of people who want to do this it's totally doable it's approachable and and it's fun so you got a handful of people but you got a you got a handful of conference right there Yep, yep. I, I have the advantage that uh, most of the conferences I've actually produced have been on cruise ships, so it's been a lot more fun too. So, <laughs> but Seattle's not a bad place to be. It just it just doesn't move like a cruise ship does. So it's it's uh, well, I guess it can on an earthquake, but uh, we're not we're not uh, knock on wood. We're not hoping, hoping for that right now. So again, we're almost out of time. Is there anything we didn't cover that you want to make sure our audience is aware of uh, before I have to let you go? So we'll start with uh, with Adam. Adam. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, I've been pitching left and right. I apologize. Uh, but the sponsors this year, they're filling up the tables uh, really quickly, uh, but there's always room for more sponsors. And uh, Linux Foundation, CSATs, Polyverse, Schedules Direct, Ada's Technical Books, and London's Trust Media have already committed. Uh, it's pretty exciting to see this this uh, overwhelming support. Uh, people believe in us and they keep coming back. Uh, sponsors are really happy with the changes in the expo hall, the exposure they get. Um, that's that's my pitch is it's it's worthwhile for you sponsors it's sponsorship sign up is still open even before the call for proposals so don't hesitate to reach out to me i'll reach out to you if you don't <laughs> awesome awesome and, and salt same question yeah um i don't know i think this has been a great opportunity thank you for having us uh i just wanted to add a fourth p to adam's list which is mm. practice um this is our sixth mm -hmm. year and it's definitely every year we've sanded some edges down so Awesome, awesome. And I have to ask my final two questions because otherwise my audience will yell at me, not literally, but they'll send me email with capital letters in it, which is like yelling. <laughs> uh, so uh, so <laughs> uh, what's your favorite scripting language and uh, what text editor do you spend all day in? And we'll start with Adam. Okay. Uh, Python and Vim. Uh, it was Perl, uh, and I <laughs> it yeah. pains me Ooh. to say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You uh, crossed over me. the that was me. Sorry, you're going, Ooh, that wasn't Randall going, oh. <laughs> 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 and, and Salt, same two questions? Yeah. Um, uh, I really, you know, I really like Bash. I really like Bash, uh, but I'd mm. probably say nowadays I spend most of my time in Python, uh, Python R mm. environments, and um, Vim as well. Okay, well, I didn't get anything that I wanted to hear, but that's okay. <laughs> the rest of the talk was great, except for those long pregnant pauses, but uh, that was our fault mostly. <laughs> so <laughs> so Adam, and, Adam and Salt, thanks for coming on the show and talking about Seagull, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in November. Thank you, Randall. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be on. Thank you very great, much. Great, great. Great. So that was uh, Adam Munson and Salt Hale talking to us about Seagull. What do you think there, Dan? Yeah, it, 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 great. It was really, really uh, good to talk to the guys. And I'll tell you something. I mean, uh, talking to them reminded me how great it is to organize an event, you know, uh, kind of like Adam was saying there. It, if you, you know, if you've got five people, you've got the start of a, of a conference. So I think we should have one in every city, really. But um, I'm not going to organize <laughs> them all, I'll be honest. But, no. but somebody can, and I encourage you to. No, but it does make me think, you know, how great it can be to organize something, see people come along. It's It's a really great thing that you can do. Absolutely. It sounds like a lot of fun. And I, I wish I had um, uh, an extra 20 hours a week to do all the things I actually want to do, especially all the stuff that we've talked about on this show over the 10 years that I haven't gotten to yet because I just didn't have time. Um, and I'm still busy working on my, my next career and everything like that. So it's just talking, taking, uh, taking up the rest of my time. But I'm definitely going to be there. Uh, now that I know that <laughs> the schedule isn't solid yet, oh my God. Mm. <laughs> Didn't see the 2017 on the top of the page. Um, <laughs> I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and, and pitch a 50-minute talk. I'm gonna do the my Flutter talk that I did at scale a few weeks ago, but of course updated because things will be different there, back then. Um, so let's talk about who's coming up next. We've got the Lounge next week, which is a self-hosted IRC client. It's a fork of Shout, which I don't know anything about, except I know it's a fork of that. Uh, Hubblestack is a modular open source security compliance framework. The project provides on-demand profile-based auditing, real-time security event notifications, automated remediation and alerting and reporting. That sounds very exciting and very apropos of the kinds of things that are happening in the world today. React PHP, after that, is a low-level library for event-driven programming in PHP, as you might hear by the name of it. RB Spy lets you profile Ruby processes that are already running. You give it a PID and it starts profiling. It's a sampling profile, which means it can run low overhead and safe to run in production. That should be handy as well. Keycloak, an open source identity and access management for modern applications and services. Pillar Project is bringing the world's best cryptocurrency and token wallet that will become the dashboard of your digital life. So that's who we have on the books right now. We're always trying to book more guests. That's part of why I'm here at Red Hat Summit this week. Um, you can go to twitch.tv slash floss, which is the homepage for this show, and see the big spreadsheet linked right from there. You can see who we're working on. If you, somebody that you want on the show that isn't on that list, please, as a project leader or community coordinator, contact me, Merlin at Stonehenge.com. Please, by email, not just by tweeting, 
We do this by email, guys. We're old school, so don't be tweeting <laughs> at me and saying things like that. Uh, but uh, uh, so, yeah, it, make, the, make sure they email me. Uh, we have a live stream at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. We're normally on Wednesdays. We got bumped to Thursday this week just because there was something big happened yesterday. I think it was on Google I.O. or whatever. Um, we're at live.twit.tv. We have a chat room. We take questions from there during the taping of the show. You can follow us at Floss Weekly on Google Plus or at Floss Weekly on Twitter. You can follow me at Randall L. Schwartz on Google Plus or at Merlin on Twitter. Uh, I, like I said, I'm currently at the Red Hat Summit. It's only got one more day, but if you happen to see me, I had a couple of people, a couple of uh, audience members come up and see me, and I had one guy that said, I have all your Pearl books, which is really cool. Nice to be recognized for that. Uh, so that would be cool. Uh, so and speaking of Pearl, I'll be at the Pearl Conference in Salt Lake City in June. I'll be in Norway. If any of you are, are my Norway audience members, please let me know, because I'll be on a cruise in July. We're stopping at just about every coastal city. So it's a 15-day cruise, and I'm going to be above the Arctic Circle in the summer. It'll be the first time I'll get to see a 24-hour day off my bucket list, mm -hmm. finally. Uh, after that, I'm going to be coming immediately to San Diego. I'll be in San Diego for about uh, a couple weeks there in late July. I have a uh, low-carb conference that I'm going to, and I'm also just going to hang out and see things in San Diego. I haven't I haven't spent any sort of recreational time in San Diego. I've never seen the San Diego Zoo in all these years. I've never seen the San Diego Zoo, and I hear it's a world-class zoo, so I'm definitely going to do that coming up. Uh, any plugs you want to make, Dan? Yeah, as soon as we're talking about events, this is this is really uh, timely because I want to mention, uh, I've mentioned it before, but there's an event called Liverpool Make Fest, which is happening in Liverpool on the 30th of June. So you've got um, just under two months, about eight weeks or something or seven weeks. And um, it's a huge event. It's it's an all day event. It's free. It's in the central library. It's on four floors. It's about 2000 people, something like that. It's really big. And uh, I'm wow. helping out with that. As we mentioned, organizing events, I should have should have mentioned that really, but I'm not doing an, I'm doing the, the online stuff, which is probably easier for me than having to do the physical side of it as well. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, if anybody anybody's interested, anybody wants to come along, uh, go to liverpoolmakefest.org or you know search for it, and you'll find it. And I've actually been doing some podcasting again recently. Um, I've been interviewing each week. I'm going to be interviewing a different maker about their project and how they got involved and what they do. And you can find those at makefest.pod factory.org and or again google for it and um, you'll find it on there and it's going to be a really great event i encourage anybody who's in the uk or can get here nearby to come for the day um, if you're interested at all in things like arduinos and raspberry pies and and even some less kind of low tech stuff we've got a lot of textile stuff going on we've got arts and crafts we've got all kinds of stuff so yeah just go to liverpool Mechfest, um org or have a look on my Twitter, which is at Method Dan, and I'll co probably constantly be tweeting about it. Well, I'm glad to hear you're back into podcasting again. So, I mean, it's it's been mm. it's been a while that we've been away from it entirely, and now you've been a guest on, or not a guest, a co-host on this show. You're not a guest. <laughs> we don't talk to you like guests. Uh, <laughs> you've been a co-host on this show quite a few times recently, which I really appreciate. I really hope you'll consider being the host on one of the two shows that I have to cover for the uh, cruise. Mm. So that, that'd be a lot of fun if I can get you to host one of those. Anyway, so... Uh, uh, Welcome back to the show. That's usually what I say at the beginning of the show, so I don't need to say it now. But thanks, Dan, once again for helping me out with the show. No problem. It's always great, and I'll see you again soon. Absolutely. And we'll see you all again next week on Floss Weekly. Floss Weekly.